are you the quantum mechanics? Yes, we're the quantum mechanics. We're the paranormal podcast for the believers, the doubters and everyone in between. And we're joined by a special guest today, our, our good old friend, James from The Lawman. Hello, James. Hello. How's it going, Pete? <laughs> it's going very well. Yeah, nice to have you uh, back with us. I think the last time we saw you, yeah. we were waiting for stones to try and move in the middle of the night. Yes, yes, we were. We were We were by the, the Enston Hoare Stone. Yeah. And it was one of the Midsummers. Yeah. And the stone didn't move. So I can only presume we picked the wrong midsummer. So you know what we're going to have to do this year, guys? We're going to have to do it again, aren't we? are going to have to pick the right midsummer. It was the journey. It wasn't the outcome. It was, it was about the stones we met along the way. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the other thing is we're back recording in the Cross Keys in Tame, which was where we started recording the Quantum Mechanics podcast. Right the Haunted there? Boozer. The Haunted Boozer. And I think the last time we recorded here, we'd spent the night here looking for the ghost of Mrs. Is Tibble. That's right. Tibble? Tipple. 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 Um, That's nominative determinism. Yeah. For a pub ghost. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's perfect. It's Especially me. one that knocks over pints, I yeah. believe. Knocks over pints. We had a flying beer mat. But we did have um we it, it ties into what we're going to talk about today. We did have some gremlins, didn't we, when well, we were recording that? Can we sorry. Flying beer mat. Yes. So uh yes, James, you don't know this story. We'd been recording and we interviewed the landlady um, mm. about the ghost and that she'd seen a few times. And we asked her whether she thought the ghost was going to make an appearance as we were spending the night here. Mm. And this was why we were setting up the equipment downstairs in the haunted bit. Mm. And she said, no, I think she'll definitely make her presence felt. And with that, a beer mat fell off the roof. They're all stuck to the roof, landed at her feet. Okay. Now, it does happen, she said, occasionally, but yes. she thought the timing was interesting. That is significant timing, but the, when you say flying beer mat... It wasn't... Yeah, OK, I might when, be slightly when, having that. When up. you say a beer mat that was blue tacked to the ceiling fell down, <laughs> fell and that's down, different. Yeah. That's, di- that's not flying. Are you, are you saying I was such. over-egging the pudding a little I'm bit? I'm saying that <laughs> if, if you tell me you're a pilot, I don't want to go flying <laughs> with you. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. But it was, yes, it, I think Ben, at the end of the evening, we were a little bit drunk at the end of that evening, I think Ben was expecting something like out of Ghostbusters, but we got a, we got a dropping beer mat. Is that Which a better description? Which bit out of Ghostbusters, the bit? The bit in the library. Oh, okay, not the saucy bit. Oh, what, with the belt and the... Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the weird bit. I Very don't, peculiar. I don't like that bit. For a kid's film, there's a lot of smoking and, uh, yeah, allusions to... Mind you, we were all smoking at 11, acts. weren't we? I mean, oh yeah, then. That's why... That, uh, that, and it, just think... If I had enough, how tall I could have been. <laughs> You'd have been 17 feet high. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. Minimum. You wouldn't, yeah. be, you wouldn't be with us. You'd be on the basketball court right now, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, I'd be on the basketball court podcast. <laughs> yeah. But the, what happened at the Standing Stones, anyone that listened to it uh, would have known that my car had some problems while we were there. And it's quite possible I just sat on the bleeper thingy. It maybe, is possible. Maybe, maybe. We did discover that uh, recording devices and phones uh, are haunted uh, from your e-meter reader. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yes. Was it an e-meter reader? I'm it, sorry it, it, it was a, a, yes, yeah, an EMF meter, a K2 meter, yes. Yes. And, yeah, my phone was very haunted. Yeah. So it could have been some of those hauntings spilling over. 17 devils is what it came up with. Minimum 17 Minimum devils. Minimum 17 devils. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but when we went away from there, it didn't stop. So mm. the car, um, we've woken up in the morning to the windows being down. And again, cars are full of electrics, so that they could are. happen. My door was open, uh, like not just unlocked, it was actually open. A jar. A jar. Yes. Your door was ajar. Uh, now, was Pete, ajar. that means that the door was slightly open, not the door <laughs> turned into a jar, if you're going to repeat that story right, in the future. Right. <laughs> it was flying open, though, the door. <laughs> yeah. It really was. The door flew open. <laughs> yeah. But I wasn't the only one. Mm. No, I, I, I have one as well. I have one as well. Oh. Because of my back door of my car, because I'd driven as well to the Stones that night, that fateful night, one of the two Midsummers. Um, and later, I found that the rear door 
I don't know if it's offside or onside. I never know what those two are. No. The driver's side, driver's side. Driver's side, And yeah. then a mechanic will say the right term and I'll go, yeah. So <laughs> I thought you didn't know, so I didn't want to say. I thought you'd uh, understand driver's side. Um, yeah, the back rear driver's side door was not locking. Yeah. There was a fault in the lock. Uh, was that was that how many days after we'd done the stage? I don't know. I didn't find out for months because I never really, really tested the doors. It. it was just... And then it was very expensive to fix, which was... Yeah, very, that was quite annoying. Well, I had one a few weeks after we'd done the stones with mm. my car. Mm. I'd come back from driving somewhere, parked on the... Uh, I've got a little driveway, parked on there, was working away on my computer, key was in the kitchen. Um, and the next minute, next minute I looked, the um, hatch door had opened at the back and was completely open. The boot? The boot had come completely open. Now, it is electronic. You can open it electronically, but I didn't have the key, and it was obviously closed when I went in the house because yeah. I had noticed. So, yeah, we've all had weirdness with our cars after mm. the standing stones. So we got talking about how we should do something about gremlins, and James said, ah, I've already done an episode on gremlins. And that's when we thought, well, that's the perfect one to do. We'll put the uh, link to that episode in the description because it's um, from 2020. It is, yes. Yeah. yeah, we had the guest Suze Kempner on it, who is hilarious. Oh, she's brilliant. Oh, and yeah. she is, uh, For I don't know if you've got any sort of uh, geeks or, or perhaps nerds uh, in your audience. No, uh, no. Uh, we me. certainly don't. <laughs> no. Um, they're all cool. Oh, they're absolute mega dudes. Um, she is going to be like a baddie in Doctor Who. Wow. Oh, really? Ooh, yeah, she's awesome. a baddie in Doctor Who. Ooh. I don't know if we've got any geeks or nerds in the, in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, we're no, all excited about we're that. We're all really cool. Look, we're, 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 I'm wearing trainers, at least. I'm wearing... Oh, you're wearing trainers. Yeah, we've yeah. got some trainers in the room. Yeah. I'm wearing school shoes Yeah, <laughs> on the weekend as well. But when we decided to do this episode, we obviously set up a WhatsApp group because that's the easiest way of like working out who's going to arrive where and who's bringing the biscuits. Yeah. And then your car failed, Peter. Yeah, I had a... It was so weird because on my car, it was my phone was plugged in and it will tell you... Uh, like a little bit of information if you receive a WhatsApp or a text. And uh, the name of the WhatsApp group came up and it was just, it was Gremlins, I think, and Werewolves, I think we've called it, haven't we? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that came up on the dashboard of my car. It was quite a snowy day, I remember. And I was driving and I've got this automatic cruise control thing that brakes for you and mm -hmm, keeps you, mm -hmm. you know. And that, the thing me. came up with Gremlins and Werewolves and I looked at it and I'm just sitting there driving with my feet off the pedals, obviously. And I know Just lying down. Just <laughs> lying down. I mean, it doesn't steer for you. It's not quite that posh. Maybe you've got kids for that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I realised I was, I was getting closer to a lorry in front of me and I was getting really, really close. And um, yeah, I hit the brakes because I thought I'm going to hit it. And then all these warning signs came on saying, you know, your sensors are disabled and not working and... So it was just ironic that you send or set up a WhatsApp group that says Gremlins, and I have a Gremlin instantly that you mm. set the group up. Unbelievable. So let's get into what Gremlins are. And I sort of feel like we're standing on the back of your work that you did in that episode. So some things we will sort of touch on, which you did. And then I've got some, uh, some new stories. So I think Ooh. you can listen to them both as compendium p companion pieces. Yes. A compen it's different to a compendium. Yes. But if you don't know what a gremlin is, it is, obviously, we talk about it as, so we, we're just suggesting that our cars had a gremlin, although I did think it was most likely we'd picked up a boggart because we were out in the countryside. We'll come back to boggarts because I do mm. think they appear to be okay. related, but they're quite often associated, you know, when, when something goes wrong, you go... Ah, there's gremlins in there. But they are associated with flying, and they come from the Second World War. But I did note, because when during the, the research, yes. I did find that the Southwest Airlines CEO, um, there was a technical failure in 2019, and the CEO said if the, the, we had gremlins. So it's become common parlance for all kinds of industries to say... Are you saying he should have said he had a boggart? <laughs> well, possibly. <laughs> but there is a fine line between boggarts and, and gremlins, right. which we'll come on to. Right. Now, this, I, under, I know what you were going to say. The Second World War isn't the first time gremlins appear, but it's where 
a lot of the stories come from. Yeah. The the first time uh, I believe that gremlins are associated with the war is in the 1920s when Ro- Royal Air Force pilots who were in Iraq and India they started rep- reporting these small impish creatures that were near or on their aircraft. And um that sort of rumor gathered around. So by the time we get to the Second World War we're in a place where people are sort of, I guess, expecting that mischief could happen and he might put it down to gremlins. Right. And the, But we're not talking about things that are invisible and just go wrong with planes. These are actual sightings of gremlins, which I thought was exciting because mm. people actually uh, laid eyes on them. And the first story that... I uncovered were uh, it's on a flight, a United uh, States Army Forces flight, and it's a B-17 Flying Fortress. That is a big craft. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. ever seen one of those. That is, they're humongous Lovely. and quite terrifying to uh, for anything to go wrong in that. I would imagine they are preparing for a mission when a gremlin appears on the wing, mm-hmm. and the crew attempt to scare this thing away, <laughs> but they describe it as becoming. Only more mischievous. I don't know how it can be even more mischievous. I suppose it's just standing there and then it decides to do something Mm. because it starts to tamper with the plane's controls. And the way they get rid of it is complete genius. So if you saw a gremlin on your flying fortress thinking, I've got to fly this thing a long way, what have I got to fend it off? You've got guns and stuff, right? Yeah. They use a thermos of hot coffee. Ah. Oh, nice. And this thing disappears. Ah, see, that sort of links into uh, a, one of the stories that we tell on on the on the Lawmen podcast, which was that the guy who described the gremlins on his plane said that they'd climbed out of a beer bottle, <laughs> and we sort of thought maybe it was like a um, it was a metaphor gone wrong, right? And then you're saying that they got rid of it with hot coffee, which yeah, is the yeah, classic. Yeah, that's even more of a metaphor, isn't cure it? Cure for <laughs> drunkenness, certainly in the past. Yeah. But people used to think it would cure your drunkenness up until the 80s, I believe, uh, according to cinema. Yeah. According well, to knockabout comedies. Yeah, or, or The Simpsons. You throw hot coffee in someone's face and then they kind of do the... Yes. And, and yeah. then they're fine again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But just what happens is you're a very awake drunk person. Yeah, you're much faster <laughs> drunk. <laughs> much faster at making mistakes. Can I, can I just ask a question mm. here, though? So this thing's on the wing, right? Or did mm. it come inside the plane? This one is on the wing. I, just laws of physics and things. If I throw coffee... Uh, a gremlin Good when I'm show, flying yeah. a plane. No, no, it's on the ground. They're preparing. Oh, I thought they were in the air. No, no, right, they're preparing okay. for a mission, and it and it's it's on the wing, and they're obviously. Oh, I don't want to fly with this thing. They spotted it before they got took off. Then yeah, but not everybody did. Uh, have you? <laughs> I love. We always talk about like names from the past and stuff. Have you come across Percy Prune? Oh no, <laughs> Percy, Percy Prune. Prune. Percy Prune. What's their story? Oh. 1942. He's flying a Hawker Hurricane uh, over the desert in North Africa, and he does spot one of these creatures on the wing while he's in the air. Mm-hmm. With prunes in your system, that could be disastrous, yeah. couldn't it? <laughs> or was he? Is he? Did he like long baths? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just very regular. Oh, that's that's why. That's why they yeah, liked yeah. him so much as a pilot. Uh, so he described it again, long, spindly arms and legs and a grotesque face, which is a bit rude. But Well, uh, you know, I, I can see that he would be peeved in that situation. <laughs> yes, he would be. Uh, and here's the best bit. It was wearing a leather helmet, a leather flying helmet and goggles, and it was taunting him. Oh. It was pulling faces and waving its arms. That sounds like Crazy Frog. You remember that? Really? It does sound exactly yeah. like Crazy oh, Frog. <laughs> is Crazy <laughs> Frog a gremlin? gremlin. Ding, oh, ding. that explains a lot, because it's got inside many it, a, a it, audio it's... equipment and ruined it, let's yes, be honest. yeah, people's minds. <laughs> yeah. There's no description of the, the downstairs region, whereas Crazy Frog has got... Right. A horrible little uh, appendage. Yes, which, which is blurred out, I believe. Oh, well, I hope so. Maybe, maybe it pruned. 
it, it's mm. it's not accurate for a frog. I can I can assure you of that. <laughs> I mean, I say I can assure you. I've seen frogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, I, I want more detail. On that, ben. <laughs> yeah, what are you what are you doing with frogs? <laughs> That's on my other podcast. Uh, is that the the Great Horn Toad pod? <laughs> no, it's frog fiddlers. No, it's, no, no. <laughs> um, so Prune attempted to shake this creature off the wing, but he says. <laughs> Uh, it's so- Operation Lily Pad. I can see it coming. Yeah. <laughs> He's got frogs porn on his computer. Oh, oh, yes. It's the right time of year for it. <laughs> this creature stubbornly clung on, even as he performed dangerous aerial manoeuvres. This is Prune, not the. Uh, yeah, not the trying to shake him off, basically. Mm. And at one point, Prune claimed that the creature even took control of the plane, causing it to plummet towards the ground. He was able to regain control just in time and eventually chase the creature away. Now, again, I don't know how you chase a creature away on, when on you're sitting plane. sitting down, but I assume what he means is he shooed it off. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I think is probably the best way to uh, to do it. Oh, that's so weird, though, isn't it? It's, it's in a, so it's got like a leather kind of yeah. flying... Cap on, like mm. the 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 way that he tells the story, it's like this thing is basically taking the Mickey out of him. Right, it, it's kind of, um, it's taunting him by sort of saying, "Look, I'm I'm dressing like you," mm. and um, it, there's also like, "I'm going to be the pilot of this right. plane." Yeah, I wonder if he got to the ground and the ground staff said, "Where's Jeff, the co-pilot?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sure he's somewhere skinny. over the Atlantic he's a little guy but that isn't as crazy as it might seem because mm. this account is taken seriously by Prune's superiors they right. don't write it off and the first thing that they believe is that it might be a German spy oh, oh. right right yeah that sounds I mean I'm not sure why a German spy would be clinging to the wings yeah well you know maybe they sort of stowed away uh, Possibly in, yeah. in in landing gear. So he know. spotted it on the wings first, and then it obviously got inside the cockpit at some point. Yeah, was trying to take control of it, and then chased it off. I mean, shoot, shoot, shoot it, it outside the plane again. I guess. Yeah. How big a plane is this? Sorry, I'm, I was imagining kind of it sat on his lap. It, it's it's Spitfirey size. So there's not much room to no. Ch- you, you can't Benny Hill chase round. No, that's that's the thing. That's right. why chased seems an inappropriate word. Yeah. Um, but the, as aside from thinking it was a um, a spy, they also consider that pe- possibly it's a new weapon, mm. and that is very similar to the Foo Fighter encounters. This kind of oh, perhaps. Um, this is the, this is the, our enemies trying to do something right to us. What like a, a robotic thing or something? Well, I guess or or a uh, hallucinatory drug. Hallucinatory drug, it, right? I think, is probably where they were going yeah. with this. Mm, I'm thinking infrasound. Oh, nice! <laughs> I'm always well, we love thinking a bit of infrasound. infrasound. <laughs> Eighteen point nine hertz. I think you're thinking. Oh, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> but this this minimum. Account, <laughs> This account became really well known amongst RAF pilots, and this particular account is credited with making the the word gremlin much more ubiquitous amongst right. Allied fighters from that period on. So we've still got three years of the war left, right? And um, there's still a lot more um, shenanigans in the air going on, and the, it, the other accounts that come from there they do stand staggeringly similar so if you take this one as a b-52 flying over the south pacific and again the crew noticed this small creature sitting on the edge of the wing the creature was described as being about three feet tall had a wrinkled monkey-like face had pointed ears once again it was wearing a flying leather jacket a cap but this time it's smoking a cigar. <laughs> what? <laughs> that Unbelievable. Is, that is the definition oh. of, like, so cool, isn't it? You're, you're like, you're a gremlin, you got the gear, uh, and a crack out the fags. Yeah. That's brilliant. That, is, that makes that gremlin look cooler and older. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Now, is, now, would you count a gremlin as a cryptid? Would you say it was a cryptid? Um... Yeah, it probably is, yeah. Because that makes it, like, 
the coolest cryptid ever. I don't know of any other ones that wear leather jackets and yeah. smoke cigars. They're, they're what all... are you gremlin? Yeah. What are you gremlin at? Yeah. What have you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that cool. Well, at first the crew thought it was a figment of their imagination or a trick of the light. That's a strange trick of the light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as they continued to fly, the creature began to move around on the wing playing with the control wires and causing the plane to shake and rattle. Mm. A bit of mischief. Like, wasn't trying to do them serious harm, just messing about with them. Is that what you'd say? It seems like a trickster. Right. So this time, as well as trying to swat it away with their hands, they even fired their guns at it. Oh, that's not a great idea for the wing, is it? No. But you've got a gremlin that you might crash. That's true. I mean, this is, again, this is not a small craft. I suppose that's the thing, like, you don't... Like, this one, because they survived to tell the tale, the gremlin was just a trickster. Right, yeah. Whereas anyone's where the gremlin, you know, took it far enough to actually cause the plane to crash, we wouldn't... We'd never We wouldn't know. hear the story. No, unless they talked about it on the that's radio. That's a really good point, actually. Ooh. Yes, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, unless they unless they reported it over the radio. Yeah, they do tend to have a to speak on a radio, and there is a bit that bit that black box thing. Actually, it would did be they have no those record. in World War Two? I don't know. Probably I don't not. Know I don't think it, it was all kind of bolt it together and go, wasn't it? I would think so. Yeah. Um, but they they do manage to get rid of it, and it is described as disappearing as quickly as it had appeared. And so, so by implication. Because uh, maybe I'm thinking about it too logically. So either the gremlin is already on the plane, gets on the wing, and then disappears off somewhere, either flying through the air, or they can just appear mm. in the air, in their leather jackets and their goggles and their caps and their cigars. And their cigars, yeah. Wow. <laughs> where, where do gremlins buy their cigars? Yeah. Where do they buy their small tailored leather jackets? Yeah, yeah. That's a really good point. They probably get them off the fairies, because remember we we, got, yeah. we did that thing on the little fairy boot that was found made out of mouse skin. Right, yes, the fey folk. Yeah. Could be. Cause I yeah. don't know if they can get cigars, though. Uh, I, be, I think the fey folk could sort you Pretty out. They're the fixers. That. Roll a leaf up and then pretend. Or, yeah. yeah. But I think the most sort of fascinating thing about all of this, the... The accounts are roughly similar. The fact they're all wearing jackets. And I didn't re- <laughs> realise this. There's a 1943 film called Gremlins from the Kremlin. Have you oh, come across no. this, James? Great title. No. Great title. Uh, as I say, Warner Brothers. And it's an animated short uh, directed by Chuck Jones. So Chuck Jones is, like, responsible for many of the f- cartoons yeah, yeah. Yeah. that we would, we would know. Folks. Yeah. And it depicts mischievous gremlins sabotaging soviet planes during the war mm. now it's obviously put out as a propaganda film uh, and of, of course at this time we're on this we're fighting on the same side as the soviets yeah and i have seen some people comment that because the planes weren't at the same standard rather than coming out of the soviet union Rather than sort of say, oh, you don't know how to build planes, which yeah. would have been a bit rude if you're fighting with them. Yes. This is kind of a way of saying, oh, there's, these, there's these bad little guys and they're, help, they're hurting our friends yes. who are trying to help us. Yes. That's the most logical explanation for this film. There could have been a World War II version, Boggarts from Berlin, couldn't there? Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, Boggarts from Berlin, <laughs> that's pretty good. But he is inspired... Mm by a book that you talk about, which is Roald Dahl, 1943, called The Gremlins. Yes. Yes. Now, in that, he comes up with an explanation for why the gremlins are cross. Yeah. It's about cutting down the forest to make way for um, uh, airstrips. Yes, yeah, in In Scotland, I think. In Scotland. Specifically, yes. So he sort of set it up, and that's sort of what made me think... Because these things sound like boggarts, but boggarts inhabit the countryside and... They're, they're very much land-based. They're very much land-based. But gremlins are very much an, 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 air an based. air-based. And, and I've never seen a boggart described as wearing a flying suit. Well, that's because they're not flying. 
<laughs> Good point. <Okay. laughs> Ask a silly question. <laughs> what about a cigar? Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I haven't seen a boggart smoking a pipe. No, but they uh, probably would. Have you got a page open there about boggarts? I do. I've got my favourite boggart story. Oh, go on right then. Here. Tell us about boggarts. So let's set up. What is the difference between a boggart and a gremlin in terms of looks? Not much, right? No, a boggart can change shape, and they and they are quite trickstery. Um, they you can get human shaped ones, which and they but they they they're, they're, they're their role is to kind of freak people out and annoy them. They do have a bit of a sort of a house elf feel to them, though. They will, they can sort of help around the house and they have the similar rules to those sort of things where if you give them clothes or thank them, ah. they disappear kind of thing. So maybe oh, okay. that's what happens okay. when they get clothes. They go up into the sky and become a gremlin. Yeah. Maybe that's where they go. What you kind of crazy a, people are giving them small leather jackets? Small, um, kind of mega dudes, I think. <laughs> I, I wonder if there was a raft of teddy bears that had small leather jackets, and that's what you give a bogger, and then it goes, well, I've got you the jacket. You do see that, don't yeah. you? The mo- the, I'm th- just picturing teddy bears in clothes. Weirdly, I think I've, the most teddy bears in clothes I've seen are dressed as little flyboys. Yeah, with a with a little leather jacket and a hat. We've cracked it. Yeah, we've cracked it. I think we're blowing this case wide open. <laughs> really uh, but my favourite boggart story. So it concerns a helpful boggart who uh, was helping out on a farm, and the f- it used to thresh the corn and help getting the harvest, and the farmer used to reward the boggart by giving it a, a cup of cream. Mm. Oh, he's going to have terrible cholesterol. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, it's still quite skinny, evidently, with the little thin arms. <laughs> We're back uh, to the liquid again, aren't we? W- what? We're back to the liquid again. So we've had beer, coffee, and now we've got cream. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good point. They uh, they love a drink. <laughs> but yeah, so this one got cream, but then the farmer died, and the son took over the farm, and the farmer's wife started to give the bogger skimmed milk. Oh. <sighs> Which nobody I think, likes that. I don't think anyone likes skim. I think if you if anyone says they like skim milk, they're a liar. It looks blue in a glass. I'd I, actually quick quick uh, milk based sidebar. Um, if you're in an awful position where you've only got access to skimmed milk, yeah. and you've got a cup of tea or coffee, um, if you filled less of your tea or coffee uh, in the cup. So if you filled your cup with less tea or coffee and then put more skimmed milk in, is that the same as putting semi-skimmed and a bit of water in? Is skimmed milk, in essence, watered down milk or is something else going on that I don't understand? They've taken the cream out so, yes, more of it would work, but it would make it terribly cold. That's the only thing, yeah. But the, so, but you've do, got so they don't pot. add water, I guess, is the question. Is that what you're asking? Do they add water to skimmed milk? What is skimmed milk just, in essence, yeah, in essence, watered down semi-skimmed milk? Right. Obviously, the process is different. Or is there more skimming going Is on? there something else happening? Yeah. Is it the same as having, you know, is it like a... Um, an alcohol percentage kind of thing. Like, you've got a, 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 a taste percentage right. in skimmed milk. You're listening to a paranormal podcast. No, but, it, <laughs> no, but I right. really want to get no, to the bottom okay. of the yeah, milk yeah. mystery. It's turned into James O'Brien's mystery hour, apart from nobody can call in. <laughs> no, one, no, and no one has any knowledge. Anyway, that's... Uh, I, I, I would have it black. If you only had skimmed milk? If I only had a skimmed milk, I'd have so, black tea. Yeah. Okay. All right, oh. then. We'll write in. To yeah. to you, yeah. On, yeah. come on to your podcast. Answers on a postcard to get only. people <laughs> to bother you about something that I want to know about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, unsurprisingly, the bogger is furious that it's being given skimmed milk. It's gone from full fat cream, <laughs> not even semi skimmed. It's gone no, straight to the skin. Yeah, from gold top, boom to sem That's to skimmed. Right. Ugh, what not a day! Right. What a horrible day! And so the bogger gets angry. He doesn't help out on the farm anymore. If anything, he does the opposite. He starts 
jeopardizing the farm. He turns the milk sour. He will leave cupboard doors open. He moves things around. And it gets a bang on pots and kettles together all night long. And then at long at last, the 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 farmer and his mother, they're just we gotta go. That we can't live here anymore. So in the middle of the night, they mm-hmm. pack up all their stuff, they put it on a car and they set off at dawn to try and find a new home. And as they reach the edge of the <laughs> that's village. That's a strange time of day to go house hunting. Well they I think that's the thing. They're just they just they've had it up to here. And I'm for, We're leaving at first light. Yes, exactly. Uh, because the bog has been there all night. Yeah. It's been banging them, whooping. And I think they were trying to sneak out, maybe, yeah. to get away from this bogger. And at the edge of the village, they meet a neighbour who asks them in supply, who asks them in surprise if, if they're flitting. flitting. And this is a Lancashire tale, so I'm going to nice. do my Lancashire accent Great. for this one. Uh, they see the so the neighbour comes up and says. Are you flitting? <laughs> and then a voice rings out from inside one of the churns. Oh. Hi, neighbour. We're flitting. <laughs> oh, no. The boggart was there all along. Oh, no. They brought the boggart with them. I, I have to say, I, I do like their stubbornness, though. Mm-hmm. Rather than giving it back the full fat yeah, milk, yeah. they decide to move house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was a simple solution. Maybe they, tr- maybe they tried, but they'd offended the Boggart, so... It was too late. Yeah, it was too late for that. What, what year is that from? The past. Ah. The it's p- from Time Memorial. <laughs> <laughs> is it, I, I discovered... Um, so they had... That, so, so sorry, the sorry. Other, my, another milk... Is this milk related? Yeah, it's a milk oh, sidebar sorry, again. Good. Sorry. Good. I, I, I mean, it looks old because I can see the book from here. I didn't realise that they had skim milk back in those days. I thought it was a modern thing. That shows how little I know about milk. Well, I guess that's how you get cream. Yeah, it does you, make logical you, sense. By, in the act of getting cream, You're this really one of the side, the side effect <laughs> is skimmed milk, and they've just basically, nowadays, they've managed to monetize it. The the level of milk ignorance on this podcast is quite amazing, isn't ignorance. it? Ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> D- dairy stupidity. Yes, oh. very nice. Yes, that's um, the name of my forthcoming EP. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the cover now. It's just some cows standing around. Some of them Looking wearing gormless. Yeah, yeah. Some of them with hats on. But they yeah. were, they were onto a good thing, weren't they? The bogger was doing all the stuff around. Yeah, it. but then they got tight. <sighs> they got tight with the bogger, like um, Dennis Nedry in Jurassic Park. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a moral tale, isn't it? It, it, it is Jurassic Cautionary Park. Cautionary tale, moral tale. But we can see how these things. I mean, they're not like trying to crash planes and such, but they are uh, causing mischief. I did find because I was looking for the earliest encounter with a gremlin it Mm. is kind of the 20s but the earliest book i found about um boggarts is in the 1500s it comes from 1584 the discovery of witchcraft by reginald scott Mm. and and again of course he describes them as being mischievous beings that are known to steal and cause harms of mischief but he says that they are pretty much rooted in um specific fields and hedges they have areas that they Mm. cover Right. So it's kind of like uh, a grid system that these bogarts are operating. They've yeah. They've got, got their own turf. The, yeah, it's not yeah. man marking, it's zonal marking. It is. To sort of use a, a soccer reference that I'm sure. Yeah, could be where the leather jackets come in, defending the turf, looking tough. Oh, oh, they're like gangsters. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like the T-Birds. Yeah. Or, yeah. or the Wire. Either, yeah. either yeah. Grease or The Wire. They're yeah. basically the yeah. same thing. Yeah. If you've seen Grease, you've seen The Wire. Don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's the same plot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, String of Bells, like, tell me about it, stud. <laughs> By the way, if you watch Grease now, it's creepy, isn't it? I always thought they were a bit old to be hanging around schools. I'm not sure you should refer to a car as a real pussy wagon. No. Um, and what it says the chicks will do uh, is not uh, semi-skimmed. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
It isn't. It isn't. Mind you, I most of the time drive a Seat Ibiza, so I'm not sure I could describe it. Uh, 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 correction. A haunted Seat Ibiza. A haunted Seat <laughs> Ibiza. That is true. That is true. Are you burning up the quarter mile? <laughs> yeah. it, with, with excellent fuel consumption, I must say. Yes. Well, I'd love to work that into that song. Yeah. Go grease like, with excellent fuel consumption. <laughs> you can get 60 to the gallon out of that thing. <laughs> But these, these, it is true that um, a lot of the accounts that I've found, it's funny you should say milk, because I've just noticed on my notes, a lot of the time they are uh, accused of turning the milk sour. Mm. And the opposite of uh, the Cocoa Pops. (laughs) Yes, but well, the opposite of sour chocolatey. Yes, yes, yes. Well, no, because Cocoa Pops, they you put them in the milk, they turn the milk chocolatey. Brilliant. They've made milk better. So Cocoa Monkey is like an anti boggart Yeah, he's, he is the anti boggart <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing that they're accused of is feeding wild garlic to cows oh, to spoil that the milk. Spoils the milk as yeah. well, yes. Yeah. If, they get, if a cow gets in the onion grass, you're, yeah. you're knackered. So could this all stem from that story that we just heard? That, that, that they were forever scarred by this semi-skim thing. That Maybe. They've been oh, that's the milk origin ever since. story. Yeah, the origin like, story. Yeah. But it, uh, to to be sensible, just for a second, it seems like what those, what those World War Two pilots were doing. So I, I found an essay about it, and basically, it is a way of. So you're going through terrible times. You don't want to put the blame of an aircraft failure onto one of your crewmates. Yes. Because that would destroy the camaraderie and it isn't in the spirit of it. So if if you say... And it's not really an open market. It's not like you can, like, fire them and get a new one in. Like, everyone's really, you know, down to brass tacks. But if, if Bob is just a terrible pilot because he's been recruited from his desk job Mm. to fly in the war... And Bob starts not being able to fly the plane properly or has a bit of a panic, which I can imagine he would. It, rather than say, God, Bob, flipping mm-hmm. idiot. And he's go, we, we, had, we had some gremlins and we, we got rid of them, yes. which is a much nicer way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, maybe you just move Bob on to gremlin watch. <laughs> to yeah. watch. Yeah. Just watch that wing for yeah. us. Just but, keep an eye on it, Bob. But here's, it is, here's a cup of coffee in case it comes or something. <laughs> so, are you, are you saying that it's that's almost a code, or are you just saying it's a story? Could, could it be a nod and a wink that everybody knew about? Is that is that the implication? Well, of what you're saying that is sort of the implication. The only thing that stops that being true, and that is the same. With boggarts, because I have seen that there are people who have had like sightings of actual boggarts, is the recording of the sighting. If you were going to say it was gremlins, mm. it's unlikely that you would make up such a fantastical story mm. unless you were kind of like, you, you know, you were so elated that you got back right. Oh, yeah, we had a gremlin. Yeah, he was wearing a flying suit and mm. a cigar. That's right, wasn't it, Bob? Yeah, he was smoking a cigar. That is possible, but these are kind of serious people doing a serious job. Mm -hmm. And if you were going to pass it off as being a supernatural thing, you might just say, you know, there's a it's the equivalent of there was a ghost in the machine, something Mm. went wrong, not blaming anyone, there was just this thing, and we're going to call it a gremlin. It's those very specific sightings Mm. that are recorded, like they're recorded in the flight notes. So Prune didn't just tell people, he wrote this down. And he opened himself up to ridicule, arguably. And I think that is the fascinating bit about it. He was used to it, it wasn't he? With the, <laughs> <laughs> he was used to it from his school days. <laughs> Poor old pruny. <laughs> wow. But it's sort of, when we mentioned Foo Fighters before, it's kind of the same same thing, really. Like, if Right, you, okay, I'm going to admit, I don't know what Foo Fighters are oh, outside of the band. Okay, right, so... This is this is where we have got an episode on Foo Fighters that ah. we talked about. So Foo Fighters, I think this is what the band is named after. Yes. So this comes from the Second World War. Fighter pilots are chased by these... They're often small, spherical, glowing objects oh. that perform really unusual manoeuvres. They don't 
do anything that actually does any harm to the plane, but they perform manoeuvres which force the air crew to sometimes take evasive action. Mm -hmm. But the brilliant thing about Foo Fighters is, after the war, both sides thought it was the other's technology. Mm -hmm. So the Axis thought that we were deploying these things. They mm. thought they were some sort of anti-aircraft technology. And that's the reason they're called Foo Fighters, because they're, they're, in, they're imagined to be items of technology coming from the other side. Mm. And they're completely ubiquitous during the war. We interviewed the guy who wrote the definitive book on Foo Fighters, and the accounts, they're much more accounts than Gremlins. There's pages and pages and pages and pages. They even set up specific people to look into the phenomena because they were so worried that Hitler had come up with this mm. incredible robotic anti-aircraft weapon, yeah. even though they couldn't determine whether it had brought down any planes. Ooh. So what we've got is kind of all of these very earnest Foo Fighter descriptions. And there is, there's one piece of old footage of a Foo Fighter that you will be able to see on YouTube, if I can find the link, I'll put it up there. It's only about 20 seconds of very grainy film, but it's filmed out of the window of an American Second World War plane. And you can see that there's this glowing object coming up to the wing and then zooming off. Mm. But these, these accounts are done very seriously and practically because people really did think there was something there. So it would seem very odd to, in the same sort of paperwork, mm. write down these ridiculous accounts mm. and for people not to tell them earnestly. That's my counterbalance to yeah. this is just made up. <clears throat> because, uh, uh, yeah, I get that. But it, it yes, and also, I guess with the Foo Fighter, it's easier to say, like you said, it's not so fantastical as somebody in a leather coat <laughs> with glasses on and the cigar. Do you know what I mean? It's just to go to that level and to put it in the report. Because, you know, like the, we hear it with uh, pilots with UFO sightings. Like Either they don't report them or they play them down and it's afterwards they say, well, no, it was actually weirder than that. But, you know, to go to the lens of describing this thing in that way is incredible. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And the fact that um, these people carried on flying as well, I think is interesting. But the, I feel like there is something in the human psyche around, because there are so many diminutive beings that are accused of being either tricksters or helpers. I mean, even like we, we saw the more supernatural ones, we were talking about the jinn. They even come down to be defined. I think you spoke about that in your app, James, like people had started giving different varieties of gremlins names. Yes, yeah, that was uh, Alistair actually, so he would have a better memory of the list. But I remember there were the jockeys who yeah. would ride seagulls and fly <laughs> wow. them into planes basically, right. and there were other ones. There was, there was, the one that stood out was the ones with glowing eyes that get in the gun sights. Yes, yes. That is a remarkable thing um, because they're described as like, there's, you can see these two glowing eyes and it's getting in the way of you lining up your gun to shoot down the enemy. Mm. But the seagull one is a really interesting one because it's another example of something that would probably happen naturally mm. that you might want to say, that wasn't my fault or I didn't like fly into... Like bird strike, Yeah, I didn't fly. I should have seen this flock of birds, but I flew into them. Oh, no, it was a gremlin that was riding <laughs> yes. on the back of one that yeah. flew it in. Yeah. It's very much like the borrowers, but an yeah. evil version of the borrowers. Yes. Thieves. Thieves, yes. They're not borrowing. They're keeping that and sending it on eBay. <laughs> but it's got into our psyche. Before we... I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the film Gremlins because you, oh, you cover oh, that yes. really well. Before we do that, let's talk about the Twilight Zone episode of the airliner with the man who sees the gremlin-like creature on the wing. Yes. So that was from Twilight Zone, the movie, right? They're, that is a... They do redo it in Twilight Zone, the movie, with Which was the same Lithgow. people who did Gremlins, I believe, who did the that bit of the it movie. It was Joe Dante and yeah. that, yes. Yeah. So that's not this one. This was a TV version. There was the, Originally, there was a TV version which had... Captain Kirk. Shatner. Shatner. Oh. Shatner uh, was the guy on the plane who was the... So what it is, there's an aircraft and it runs into some engine trouble and he looks out the window and he sees there is a beast on the wing. 
do you know, by the way, that gremlin is credited with the... Uh, uh, there's I an actor... A plane. Nick, like, yeah. Nick Kravitz is the gremlin on the, on the wing. The actor... Really? I know. I don't know who he is, but, but I like the fact... Done? Yeah. On Wikipedia, he's credited as <laughs> Nick Kravitz, not in full costume, as the <laughs> Gremlin. <laughs> is that his own spindly arms? <laughs> That's his own spindly well, arms. Well, he didn't have his leather jacket on. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but that is very, very, very much a World War II account turned to modern day, isn't it? Mm. I mean, it's, it's a man... Looking out the window, he can see something that is going to make this plane come out of the sky, and nobody believes him. Yeah, and that's um, as we mentioned on the podcast. It, the age of shutters at that point would you, you would imply, you know, early si- the 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 episode is set in the early sixties, yeah. and he would he would have been the right age to have been um, a pilot in a war. Yeah, that's true. And yeah. So he could, it could be, he, well, obviously, on one hand, it's PTSD. And on the other hand, it's him seeing a gremlin again that he'd had experience with before. Right. Because I remember that from the movie mm. one, because there's lots of play, isn't there, where he's screaming and shouting and getting people to look out the window, but mm. the gremlin always disappears. Yes. Yeah. You know, so everywhere. So you are, I remember watching that one going, is he. Is he just imagining this, or is this really mm. happening? Yeah, yeah. The um, <laughs> sorry, I was just referring back to my notes. I found somebody on uh, 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 one of the forums saying, "Is the Gremlin in the Twilight Zone real?" Um, that I don't know what to make of that. Mm. But it, but it's amazing how it's got into the psychology and watching that episode. The first time I, I flew, I was I was a teenager, and, and I'd seen that episode, and I couldn't get it out of my head. Ooh, yeah, that's going to and, and I still can't get it out of my head, because it is a, um, like you say, it's either PTSD or it's, um, it's a way of describing somebody's fear about a plane falling out mm. of the sky, mm. which also plays back into, is that how original Gremlin accounts come? But... Again, I go back to my argument about descriptions. I won't go back into there. But, but it is fascinating. But it does, mm. that reminds me... I mean, we've talked a lot on the podcast in, in the last few weeks about disassociated states and kind of hallucinations that can come from that. And you can't think of something that's probably that much more stressful than being in a plane in the World War II, yeah. being shot at, you know... Yeah being you know so you can understand why the adrenaline's pumping you could get yourself into a a disassociated state or even a mass hysteria thing on a plane with three or four people all just in that state it's yeah possible. yeah of course of course yeah. and then as you rightly point out that turns into gremlins the movie yeah oh. well there was originally as we talked on the pod before the roll Dahl story was going to be turned into a disney cartoon mm. Um, ah. But there was some sort of legal issue at the time, which now it sounds like it might have been because uh, Warner Brothers had just brought out a cartoon uh, of Gremlins. But yes, the Joe Dante, Joe Dante, Joe Dante, Joe Dante, 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 Joe Dante's Gremlins are oh, such a good oh, film. What a brilliant film! I was thinking about this the other day. It's got, it's like got these weird, almost movements. In mm. it, you know, not back to the prunes, but it's, <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, it starts like a kind of normal. I know it's not Spielberg. I know he was involved, but I know he didn't direct it. But almost Spielbergy, really Spielbergy at the start, mm. and then you go into almost this bit that's like it's a wonderful life with the kind of weird woman who comes into the bank, who's a bit like, uh, was it Mister Potter in It's a Wonderful Life? And there's that Christmas connection, mm. and then it goes all kind of horror-y, almost ends like a vampire movie. And then you've got that weird thing with the chimney and the the one of the main characters telling this story about her father getting trapped in a chimney and yeah, dressed as Santa, and dressed as Santa yeah. dying, which is based on an urban legend, I think. But so weird. There's, I mean, it's brilliant, but mm. there's so many bits to that movie that are strange. Yeah, yeah. And have you seen Gremlins Two? Yet the new batch. The new batch. That's even That's even weirder. more weirder. Is that even got Christopher Lee in it? Yes, I think he is because there's a TV studio. It's all. It's yes, all. It's basically right. Gremlins, but relocated into a tower block, which is 
I think it's meant to be a parody of Trump Tower. Yeah, is it, it's or in something? New York, definitely, isn't it? Yeah. And um, yeah, and then there's a TV studio in there, the Gremlin, and a science lab that the Gremlins get involved in. Yeah, very very odd film. But the the way that the uh, the Gremlins who uh, transform and become the evil Gremlins, mm. they maintain that trickster like element yes so they're not going around like trying to hurt people they just find it funny to yeah. do things that upset people they do hurt people like when they hot wired the lady's uh stairway i think there were a few deaths weren't there? yeah and she flies out the window but it's not like they're they're murderers they're doing it because it's funny yes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. they're, they're not, always laughing yeah they're not just you know strangling people or something yeah. they're yeah they're they're tricking them they're hot wiring their uh What's it called? The thing that goes up the stairs, the chair, the, the chair the, up the stairs. The, the stair lift. A stair lift, then a stair lift. A stair, a stair lift, yeah. Um, but the, but that that sort of goes to like this gremlin who is who is described as taunting Prune and tries to get, grab hold of the controls. It's not a sense that he's trying to kill him. He just thinks it's really funny. Yes. Yeah, and, but, and the boggart doesn't seem to want to hurt people. He just like he's annoyed. He's mm. Yeah, but I, I'm curious though because in the film there's lots about like, uh, machinery not working. You know, there's lots about cars. Weirdly, yeah. that's how we started talking about this. And mm. the um, the son's kind of mad inventor father who can never get anything right. That that kind of gremlin. Is that, is that what set up Gremlin as a metaphor for those things going wrong mechanically, or did that exist before? So as far as I can tell, no. The first time Gremlins is used is in the 1920s. Right. I think it's the way you get into it is that is the time of technological advance. Before that, yeah, we do have technology, but it's only been around a few number of years really i mean when we talk about like sophisticated mechanical technology right. I, I don't mean obviously we have steam engines and stuff like that but i'm talking about things where people didn't necessarily quite understand how they worked and they were also more ubiquitous mm. so when you get into that state when things go wrong you come up with a thing which explains what it is it's the equivalence of like when you you know when your car's having probably you don't quite know what it is you know, you know, you can say you know, my, my oh, car's having an off day, or yeah, but then you need something to refer to. Everybody yeah. understands. Oh, we've got to take the car to the garage. It's got gremlins. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. And and I will. Um, I think we'll probably do it as a, as a, an adjunct to this as a separate release. But it's the same as computer bugs. Mm. Yeah. So you probably all know everybody in the room and listening that that is a real thing that happened. A real moth did get into some uh, early computer programming, um. and and a bug in the system. Oh, is that where that comes from? That's where wow. it comes from, because a, ah. a moth really did dis sort of wow. um, disrupt an early computer. And I heard that someone really did send an email with an attachment that was actual spam. <laughs> <laughs> so delicious. <laughs> yeah, but it would, like, it sort of leaked out your disk drive. <laughs> <laughs> but you need those, you need those reference points. Mm. And, and I suppose the thing about... The gremlin and the boggart is that unlike other cryptids, they tend to want to interfere in humans much more than other cryptids. And then it's kind of like, before we started this, we're like, are they like fairies? Now, fairies try and interfere with humans a lot. Is there a subset of humanoid tricksters that just like annoying humans? Mm. And, and it would be fascinating to to work out you know are are those accounts psychological or are they real we will never know i suppose they they really did run with it though in yeah. in the second world war and and if you go with that sort of psychological explanation that it's easier to you know when you're when you're in a bind and you're all on the same team it's easier to you know imagine it to create an outside force that is causing you problems, but then the remedy for that is to, you know, make sure you double check all your wiring, Jeff, because there's I think the gremlins are around today because Jeff is rubbish at checking his wiring yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And the the amount of propaganda, like they ran with this gremlins idea. They like I'm just if you do just a search for images, 
um, there's all the sort of posters with things like gremlins think it's fun to hurt you. Use right. care always. And it's like gremlins love to pitch things in your eyes. So wear safety goggles. Pitch things in your eyes? Yeah. Pitch, I guess that's in baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw at you. Well, in your podcast, you did you did read a poem where they, they describe it as pitchforks in your eyes. Oh, and oh, so you think? Oh, what's so like almost like large? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but in mm. a funny way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Gremlins will push you round. Look where you're going. They're just, you know, they're real. Oh wow, gremlins. Oh, what period is that? The Second this World is War. All Second World War propaganda. Right, right, image. right, right. Gremlins will get you if you don't watch out. That's the kind of that's which the again, vibe. mate. That if there's that much like focus on it maybe mm. it's easier if you're on a plane to say yeah we saw a real one mm. <laughs> because it's almost it's almost normality to be talking about yeah. them on a daily yeah. basis maybe. exactly yeah, yeah. But, but when when you start talking about those posters you end up with a third possibility so um is it like pushing carrots as seeing in the dark mm. and you put so much weight behind that message that people start to believe it. Yeah, yeah. So that your enemy doesn't think your pilots are terrible and your planes are terrible. They start to think that you might be being uh, bothered by supernatural wee mm. beasts. Mm. Same as how come they can see in the dark? Have they got radar? No, they've got carrots. It's yes. the same, same kind of deal. Right. Because that's obviously referenced the fact that carrots don't affect your vision at all. It was it was basically propaganda put out to cover up for the fact that radar had been invented. Yeah, right. yeah, I should have explained. That. <laughs> Sorry, I got so carried away. Yes, but he, but the the strength of that um, message meant that as far as my grandmother's generation, she would say, "Eat your carrots; they'll help you see in the dark." I was still told it. Uh, Were as you? A child, but told it with earnest, or told it as a joke. Earnest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was in the same ballpark as, like, the crusts will make your hair curl. Eat your crust because it'll make your hair curl. And I was like, I don't, I don't want curly hair. Now I've got curly hair and I'm regretting all those crusts. Of course, as a parent, they should have said, well, what is it you do want? And you go, I don't know, a Rolls Royce. Eating your crusts will make you have a Rolls Royce. Yeah, eating your, <laughs> eating your crusts counts as points for a Game Boy. Yeah, that's right, Dr yeah. Drink semi-skimmed or you'll lose the farm. I always <laughs> remember that one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, can I just come quickly come back to the difference or similarity between boggarts and gremlins? Because that's the only bit I'm slightly confused about. So... Do we are we associating the boggart and the gremlin together because they do similar things and they've been described as looking similar? Is that where the connection is? But one's a yeah. countryside one and one well, one's likes to just fly. Land based and one is the sky based. And yeah. I think that's the thing. Like as you said about the territorialness of boggarts, perhaps gremlins are similarly territorial, but they just live in clouds, and we didn't experience them because we didn't fly until right. 100 years ago so we didn't interact with them so like maybe there's underwater ones as well so they just spent their life flying with seagulls and yeah and just not messing around else. just flying seagulls for fun right not even into anything yeah, yeah you'd have to be hella brave to fly a seagull just for fun yeah just for fun i've actually that's funny you should say that oh that's, that's why it comes up because in your episode you said there's no such thing as a seagull Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry, I've been misspeaking. It's just gull. gull. Yeah, it's a gull, yeah. Okay. Is it's it just a, a gull that's near the sea. <laughs> a shore gull. Mm. I'm loving that factual fact, but I just in my head, I'm just imagining a gremlin on the back of a seagull in a leather jacket with a cigar. That's all I can see in my <laughs> yeah. mind. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and I, I suppose the best thing about gremlins is their song, Hey, James, you can do their song. Oh, can you? Oh, the Mogwai. You can do the Mogwai. Oh, <gasps> there you go. It's oh. like he's in the room with us. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm, I'm transformed. Don't like, feed me up to midnight. I am transfixed. <laughs> it reminds me of um, uh, like early Enya. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> terribly Sorry. <laughs> My hypothesis is that there were land-based boggarts and gremlins are, in essence, sky-based boggarts. Right. 
but they were brought down to ground quite a lot by these World War II planes, presumably, if they were sort of attached to the plane. And then, you know, it's not beyond the realms of impossibility, if you believe in gremlins, that they could have been brought to earth by, brought to, literally to earth from the skies by aeroplanes in World War II. And where we were when we were watching out for the Standing Stone moving... Where all our car troubles where all, started. Where all our car troubles started was not very far from the now disused airfield RAF Chipping Norton, which Ooh. was a World War II airfield. It was bombed a couple of times um, during the Second World War and then was sort of disused after the Second World War and is now part of Clarkson's farm. Oh, weird. Is that right? If only that wow. would become more cursed. Wow. <laughs> well, that's... Um, I mean, it seems quite a cursed project, to be honest. Well, I was going to say, yeah, of maybe Boggarts have been... Well, the in gremlins. many ways, he's not had much luck, has he? No, no. With planning permission, with locals. Nothing. But I, I like that idea, though, that... Are you saying it's a possibility that a gremlin could have been brought down to that RAF base? Yes. Hanging around the stones. Yes. Maybe maybe there at midnight waiting to see him moved like we were. Yeah. Oh, we saw that little doll, didn't we, thing? There was a little doll that was in one of the stones. Oh, I yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah. That, was that, was, that was quite freaky. That was quite freaky. And then as basically, it has to be three, I guess, that got into our cars. Yes, they? they followed us home. Wow. There's a thought. We've been gremlined. That's. I don't know how you get rid of them. Well, that's the thing. With a bogger, you would give it clothes or thank the Lord for it. That kind of get you would get rid of them. So maybe or leave it out some food. So maybe just leave a little biscuit out in your I, car. I'm going to buy some full fat cream and see if I can tame it. Leave it in your car until it becomes cheese. Yeah, see yeah. if I can tame the bogger. I was actually thinking about making a cheesecake. I'll, I'll give it a slice. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what when because I got the door fixed at the mechanics and maybe they, Mate, so that could be in a garage. You passed it. It's like the ring. You passed it on to someone else. Or maybe, or maybe the mechanic just just sort of went round with a you know a bourbon cream or <laughs> something. And Jack, we got another gremlin here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crack open the Garibaldis. <laughs> no, that would not get rid of them. That is the Garibaldis are the skimmed milk of the biscuit yeah, world. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, it'd have to be a chocolate hot knob. Oh, big time. Yeah. Or a dark chocolate digestive, a DCD. A yeah, DCD. It's an orange fight count. Ooh. Oh, he's, he's, raised the, he's raised the stakes, <laughs> hasn't he? I mean, if you're going to go down that path, yeah, I was going to go for a triple chocolate M&S cookie. And... On that note, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm going to expand my belt. I was thinking we've we've probably still got um, a few more gremliny like tales to do. I'm, I reckon we should maybe do another episode. Episode, yeah, called, computer based ones called mm. Gremlins Two: The New Batch. If you're up for staying and oh, doing yeah. that, James, definitely. So we, so we will see you uh, for this week. Thank you for listening to the Quantum Mechanics. And just because it was so brilliant, James, rather than us play the title music, could you gremlin us out of this episode? <laughs> Gizmo you out. Oh, uh, you yeah. mogwai us out, I should say. <laughs>